Welcome back. This is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And what I want to show you this morning is some of the features of this TIV DIO model HR-11S radio. And it has a multitude of functions. And whatever you do, don't lose the manual because these keys on here have multi-functions, sub-functions. And Remember how, how to do something uh, can be difficult to remember, so you really need to keep that manual close by. Even if you've used it for a while and then you don't use it for a while, you could forget how to do something because some of the things are not intuitive of how you do it. So I'm going to explain tuning on this radio, how to tune frequencies and stations. There are five ways of doing that. Yes, five ways. And we're going to go over those briefly right now. The first way, which again is not intuitive, is to direct tune a frequency. Yes, you can, it's got a numeric keypad and you can direct tune. Now your first reaction, and my first reaction was, you start punching the keys to punch in the frequency. That nah, doesn't do it. What you have to do is you have to push the return key first. Then it puts in the mode for selecting your frequency. So I'm going to put in 10 megahertz. And I, I didn't do it fast enough. That's another thing you have to do is it'll wait maybe two or three seconds. And then if you haven't pushed a key, then it says, okay, he really didn't want to do anything. So I'll try it again here. I'll push the return key right down here in the corner, and I'll push 10,000, and then I'll hit the return key again, and it tuned to 10 megahertz. So direct tuning, love radios that have direct tuning. Certain frequencies I like to listen to, and I like to be able to get to them right away. That's method one. Method two is to use the 7 and 8 key to go up and down in frequency by, in this case we're in Troy band, by uh, 5 kilohertz. So you just press the 8 key to go up, and see now it's 10.005, 10, 115. So that's the way to manually tune up and down. Use the 7 key to go down in frequency. That's method 2. Method three is you could use a couple of different methods to store a frequency in its memory. And then if you want to go through those memories, you use the four and five key, which below that says memory minus memory plus. So I'll hit the five key and it went to a memory that I previously restored, which is 3.450. Now the way I got that frequency and the ones I have in memory stored is I use the auto search and store tuning method. It's another method. So number three was to use the memories and go up and down in your memories. Okay, now uh, I just mentioned it is to auto search they call it ATS and in that one and I'll have to look at the manual I've forgotten already because there's two methods similar to this um, is you have to go to the menu that's I had trouble finding how to do this and then I went to the manual and it told me how to do it you have to go to menu which is right here you press menu and then you have to scroll down um, and select Auto Search. And then hit Menu, I believe. And now it's doing auto searching through all of the shortwave, the international shortwave bands. I think, I have to recall, I think it only sh scans the international shortwave bands, not the entire shortwave band. Let me, uh, let me let it run here for a few seconds. 
It's down at the uh, lowest frequency. I'm trying to keep the glare off of there. 3.5, 3.7, 3 3.8. Does it pretty fast. So it's looking for stations or noise. Whatever is they're looking for strong signals. 3.9, 3.4. We're going to run, it, run a little more to see if it's only tuning the international broadcast bands, which to me is a negative. I want it to tune the entire shortwave band when it's using this feature. We're up to 4.6, 4.7. Now let's see if I go to 5.0. That'll be the key. 4.8. Four point nine, five point zero. So it is, it appears to be scanning the entire shortwave band that that it can tune. It can it, I think it tunes like three point something megahertz to like twenty three megahertz. So it's scanning, looking for strong signals. If it gets one, it stores it in memory. It overwrites what you have in there. Okay, so that's another tuning method, and I can stop this by just hitting a, a key. Okay, uh, I told you about direct tuning. Oh, auto tuning is where it tunes similar to what you saw, except only within one international broadcast band. So now it's like 5.025 if I press the you find it right here this auto button right here I'm sorry about the uh, camera there's an up and a down you press that now and hold it's now sh scanning and looking for a station I actually think it's it scans the whole frequency again whole shortwave band but in this case it doesn't store it and it stops on the first strong station it finds. So that's auto tuning as opposed to auto search, ATS. So that gives you five, if my count is right, five ways of tuning manual tuning, auto tuning, direct frequency tuning, ATS, and memory recall. Five methods of tuning, pretty versatile. Um, the one thing I haven't figured out how to do, and I sent Angela an email this morning, is, is there a way to keep the display backlight on? Because when I'm, you know, like right now, when I'm trying to demonstrate something or I'm searching through frequencies or something, I want that backlight to stay on. Let me see something. Let's go uh, back to ATS. So I have to go to Menu. And it has to scroll down using the 7 and 8 key. Select Auto Search. Press Menu. And now it's searching. Let's see while it's auto searching if the backlight stays on. My guess is no. Because they're quite trying to conserve the battery. Because that backlight uses quite a bit of the, the battery power. Yes, yep, there it goes. It went off. I wish there was a way to keep it on. Maybe there is. I haven't found it yet, or I found it before and I forgot. Got it. Don't lose the manual. But of course, you can get one when you're online. Now, notice I've got the light on. And the reason I've got the light on is I'm trying to drain the battery so that I can do a power test using the crank. But this, I, I've had this radio on now for three hours, continuous the light on and the battery is still let me hit a button here still three bars out of four after three hours so this little battery where is it on the bottom here this little cell phone battery gives you a lot of service and like I say I've had it the radio on I've had it on Full volume. I've had the light on, and it's still 
going strong. Um, but my, what I said before, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the battery drained so I can use the crank to see how efficient it is in charging that battery. And even today, maybe I'll try the solar charger. Put it outside, which you don't want to leave it outside. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm going to do uh, quite a few more shows on this one because it's got so many features. And then I also we'll go back to the V116 and go over some of its features, comparison, and the V115. And I hope to do uh, some kind of field testing as far as short wave reception. Now, all of these radios do a fine job of AM or medium wave and FM. No problem there. Uh, what we're really interested in is how well it does on shortwave. And of course in this case, uh, this is an emergency radio with the dyno cranking power and the solar. Uh, we're interested in AM and FM in case of emergencies like we had last week here in Florida. That's it. If you have any questions or anything you want me to go over on any of these three radios, Please let me know. I can say I've got a much uh, more videos I want to do on some of these functions, such as um, I think, yeah, they all have MP3 player capability. So I want to go over that. How do you do it? Whoops. Um, and how those work, and whether it works very well. Uh, some of these have a um, text reader. And I'm going to try to do that. I know it's not that great. It's just, you know, limitations are pretty high. That's it. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.